My name is Anthony Sims Jr. and I plan to be the next light heavyweight champion of the world. Sims, the kid, as he is sometimes called, was born to box. His father was a super middleweight boxer in the United States Army all post him. From this bloodline, Junior was born with the skills needed to dominate his class. I have now been boxing for 12 years. So uh, I had my first fight at six years of age. You know, I was a little bad dude with the hands. You know, giving it to any guy that stepped up to me. When I turned eight, that's when things started really rolling. I turned eight, that's when I started putting boys away, stopping them with just two or three punches at a time. They couldn't handle me. So then I had to start sparring pros. You know, they'd get down on their knees and spar with me. That's how, that's, how, that's how bad and how fast my hands was. My first national tournament was in 2009, title tournament, fought a Dominican cat. Punished him like it was nothing, stopped him with the right hand. It was over. That's when I had my first uh, fight with Coach Johnson. Coach Hank Johnson. I have trained Marvin Johnson, light heavyweight world champion three times. Ray Mercer, heavyweight world champion. Al Cole, light heavyweight world champion. And Charles Murray, light heavyweight world champion. I worked with people like Riddick Bowe when he was an amateur. Roy Jones when he was an amateur, um, Andrew Maynard when he was an amateur, and a host of others that I can't think of right now. I noticed, I noticed Anthony when he was six years old. We were at Riverside, and I was home on leave at the time, and I saw this little kid and his mother, and they put this little kid in there, and Jerome, was working with him. And Jerome hit him in his stomach and the kids started crying. But he went back to the corner and came back out. And, I, and he started, he was angry and he started fighting as hard as he could. And I said, if this kid stick with it, he's gonna be a champion someday. Second national tournament was in Georgia. Knocked him out with a hook. You know, these guys, these fools couldn't handle me, man. Just, I was just too fast, I was too slick. I had too much power. And it, it was just impossible for him to touch me. Uh, third national title, you know, it was a rough time. I fought a guy on steroids in uh, Las Vegas. He, he, he beat me, you know, he dropped me, he got me. Um, but from that point on, you know, I knocked out every person that I fought in the national tournament. I turned 16 years old. I got drafted by the Crunk team. It wasn't no easy thing. I had to go on there. It's basically like a, a gang initiation. They threw me in there with their biggest dog, and I chopped them down like a tree, made the team. Um, I was fighting 139 at the time, and they didn't want me to take out their top fighter, so they bumped me up to 165. They wanted me on the team that bad. 16 years old, fighting in the Junior Olympic team. Uh, went to the Junior Olympics, you no know, punished them. I got my medal from Evander Holyfield. So I had a good talk. He gave me a lot of, he gave me a lot of wisdom. And um, I got a two-week notice that they want me to go and try out for the Olympic team. So I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be difficult. I'm 16, about to turn 17, and they wanted me to fight grown men, which was no problem because I've been doing that my whole life. Uh, from that point on, I went and I made the USA team. I placed third on, on the Olympic trial, so I made the USA team, and I went overseas. When I went overseas and I went to Puerto Rico, it was Puerto Rico versus USA, basically. So every day we was going against the Puerto Rican Olympians. I put out two Puerto Ricans there, broke two ribs on one Puerto Rican Olympians. 
second Puerto Rican Olympian, knocked him out. Um, went to Armenia. Uh, I was on the USA team. We traveled there from Puerto Rico to Armenia. Got there. Every country in the road in one place. You know, it's a lot of tension. Nobody speaks the same language. You know, I'm on the USA team. We acting the fool. They put me against the defending champion. You know, I I wasn't sweating. It. I'm like, hey, it's what I do. I'm the, I'm, I'm number one in the road, basically, in my mind. And anybody see me knows that. So I got in the ring. Everybody screaming, throw punches, first 30 seconds. You know, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just, I always stay calm. That's me. I stay calm. You never see me sweat. Shot come out of nowhere, put him away. One punch in, in the whole fight. He's done. He can't even get up. They got to drag him up out of the ring. So he might have had a couple broken ribs, eternal bleeding. I don't care. Yeah, he stepped in there. That's what he get. As far as boxing, I have no regrets about my amateur career. And now it's time to move on to, to them big things. This young man that I saw working with Jerome and some of the other boxers there, now has become a young man who is awesome, who will be one of our greatest fighters ever. So I really believe that, uh, and if you know anything about his history, he's been fighting all his life. This kid is going to be something great. Anthony is like any other athlete. He's a people's person, very outgoing. He's a great guy, you know, he's different from any other athlete. He's humble, he's determined, and he's very strong mind. So when he set his mind to something, he does it. And he listens. Since five years old, he was always the same, ambitious and outgoing. So I'm so anxious to see what the future holds for him. I vow that if somebody's going to beat me, they're going to have to do everything they can to beat me. They ain't going to just be like, hey, I beat him and walk out with the ring. If you beat me, y'all, you leaving with some broken ribs, a busted nose. You leaving with something to show I was there. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. I won't stop now. Whoa. Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the homies that ain't making it. My folks locked down. Whoa. I never went nowhere. No. What they say in loot is back. Yeah. Blame it on that conjure. The hood call it looting. So it's time to leave the gym. You know, we put in all the work. It's time to go home. But I'm going to leave you for what we stand for. What Jerome stands for right here. You got Jerome right here. You got Jerome. Mr. Hank Johnson, my coach. So I'm going to leave you with my slogan. He want it. I need it. He thinks it, I believe it. He dreams it, I am it. Peace. Oh my yeah. It's for my people in the streets. And this thing right here. Yeah.